quick disclaimer. I like the movie. It was well received by the Brony fandom. Okay, thanks for watching and enjoy the Sins video. Goodbye. Lionsgate, the people who brought you such classics as Food Fight and Fred 2. Allspark, the people who brought you- wait a minute, they're just Hasbro in disguise. You know what they say about glitter. You'll continue to find this stuff lingering many years later. This is technically a reboot from the 80s, right? We almost couldn't book a stable! It's funny because she didn't say hotel. She said stable because they are horses. She's smart and organized and cool under pressure! Random background pony knows about as much about Twilight Sparkle as the executives who wrote this movie. These theatrical wings. What you talking about? The awkward pause after every funny line in this movie is almost as deafening as a laugh track. Canterlot is completely different than it is in the show because we don't have time to establish the socioeconomics present in the show. Here, all of Canterlot is an accessible, generic pony paradise. The show's faces both know their limits and know what limits to push. This movie's not so subtle attempt at a meme face falls into uncanny valley territory. Discord's not even in this movie, but he would be the one to include a fart joke. Holy horse apples, this mug is in another dimension! So clearly she's going for fabulous, and fabulous takes time. Except for when fabulous has a musical number to speed up the process, of course. Can get done in four seconds flat! That line is only 40% brony reference. This awkward pause is the most we'll see of the ongoing crush. Before Photoshop, after Photoshop. Twilight micromanages approval of every single pie. Meanwhile, every pony in Canterlot silently waits for the princess to fly back and continue the song with them. How can we expect Twilight to survive attacks from evil villains if she's easily defeated by a cake? Just my Easy Bake and Betty Cake Cannon! Easy Bake Oven reference! Because Hasbro movie! Sia was a major factor in the marketing for this movie. Although she does sing at the end, this is probably her most narratively significant scene. And it's overshadowed by this Pulp Fiction reference. Also, we already have a famous pop singer, or two, that could have filled this role. Fun fact, this airship was rendered on an original PlayStation. Movie draws inspiration from another cinematic masterpiece, Angry Birds. All your applause. Put your wings together! Put your hooves together! This is an anthropomorphic hedgehog in a My Little Pony movie. And you thought ponies invaded the world. True world domination belongs to the Sonic fandom. Transformers sound effect, because Hasbro movie. If the ponies don't know who this is, then they haven't been paying attention to the rest of the world, which is under Storm King control. If they do know who that is, they should already know this is a hostile invasion and stop acting so naive. Fun fact, Commander Tempest is literally both edgy and blunt. Tempest, is it? So, Celestia does know Tempest already, right? There's no way she learned the name from Grubber. For Commander Tempest! Commander Tempa? For Commander Tempest! Commander Tempid? Tempest! Commander Temperpedic? Tempest Scar floats above her head. Props to Cadence for being the only princess to actually do something, but here's a sin for their combined utter failure. Neither the Canterlot Guard nor the Wonderbolts think this is a big enough threat to make an appearance. Super important crown breaks almost as easily as the toy. But they're always hungry. Hungry hippos? Hungry, hungry hippos. Because Hasbro movie. Let's go find this hippo! Uh, south? Spike, that's east. Since Canterlot's to the north, Pinky was actually going the right direction. That's racist. All of this time spent with the drawn-out, we're tired and near-death gag should have been spent showing how they got here and how many days have passed. Take a look at this scene of a time a character traveled even a fraction of the distance they're traveling now. Suddenly, the introduction of an anthropomorphic hedgehog in the pony universe doesn't seem so bad. We've got pigs, a tortoise, a shark, this axolotl-looking thing. There's too many creatures that look like they're in the wrong movie to name. Oh, I'm sorry. Fun fact. Twilight is contractually obligated to apologize for something she didn't do in order to qualify for the Canadian tax credit. And don't touch anyone, because parts will fall off. <laughs> Male anatomy jokes in My Little Pony. Now we're going to be flagged by YouTube for being advertiser unfriendly. Explaining the fact Rarity owns a smaller version of Kappa would be incredibly awkward. Welcome, My Little Ponies. Roll credits. Apologies for the state of my litter box. Good to know the anthropomorphic cat still uses a litter box. Not like the queen of the lions, or tigers, or bears. Oh my. Crotch jokes and litter box jokes and overuse jokes, oh my. The 
Fishman just got dropped! Fishman, as in hybrid of fish and man. My holy world. We're going to run out of credits to roll at this point. Go, go! Twilight, you're the only one who didn't go yet. This would be a cool shot if every pony wasn't running in place. Throw them overboard. Looks like every pony but this one bird was already thrown overboard. Captain Solano's earring isn't on the correct ear in the portrait. Murdoch's eyes are highly offensive and should be censored immediately. Our main characters, everyone, cowering below deck while others prepare for battle. Contrast this with the show and you'll see a massive change. Also, while we're using footage of the T-Rex battle, this is as good a time as any to talk about how the movie shamelessly reuses elements from this episode. T-Rex invades from outside of Equestria to steal pony magic, and he achieves his final form after robbing the magic of the princesses. T-Rex even looks like a better version of the Storm King. Nope. All we're hauling is Storm King merchandise. Buy our toys. Oh, for yes, this rescue mission is for Celestia's sake. Quit thinking, Twilight! Yeah, letting every pony free fall for half a minute while they perform visual gags before you took action to save their lives was lightning quick thinking on your part. That's it! I simply cannot even! How do you do, fellow kids? I like internet memes. Do you like internet memes? Editor accidentally flips the movie upside down. See, doesn't it look better this way? Legends tell of a muffin-loving derped one. Movie actually tries to hide sea ponies until the reveal, even though it was impossible not to see them in marketing. Rarity, quick, say something which is totally inappropriate for the matter at hand, but great trailer fodder. I hate epic adventures. No pony makes any effort to swim to the surface. Not only do they begin drowning within seconds, but apparently it's a very peaceful way to die. Applejack's hat remaining on the top of her bubble is just the sort of silly cartoon logic one should expect from My Little Pony, and the movie is to be applauded for not obnoxiously drawing attention to it. But it's still going to be counted as a sin, because Cinemarisons hates all that is good. Sequestria consists of this wide shot, this throne room, and these colored backgrounds. Were you hoping to see a whole new civilization and all the interesting logistics involved with an underwater city? Too bad, the budget is just about ironically dry at this point, so a couple flat backgrounds is all you get. Oh, see? This civilization actually has guards? What's Canterlot's excuse? I'm the queen. I'm just the queen. I am Queen Nova. I think she wants us to know she's the queen. Fun fact, this was the original pitch for the Sea Pony toy line. Once upon a time, like a while ago. You just abandoned your entire city and fled? Applejack practically phrases that as an accusation, yet that's precisely what the ponies did back in Canterlot. You already know what is about to be said. This transformation doesn't serve this story. It doesn't support their cause. It's only for one thing. Buy our toys! With this, we could transform every pony at home into something powerful enough to face the Storm King's army! Or you could just use that spell you've known for a while now and accomplish the same thing. Plot debunked, mic drop, let's wrap this thing up. Vapid imagery solely to distract kids and sell a new toy line. The fact that the rest of the movie isn't this bad makes it all the worse. You guys know Equestria is still under attack, right? All of your friends locked up as slaves. Ah, who needs them? We have a toy commercial to shoot. It's okay. It's okay when it's obviously not okay, cliche. Giant claw cage floor appears beneath Twilight without disturbing the ground. Twilight chooses not to slip through the massive spaces between these bars. Tempest shadows have a horn. This is obviously an animation error and not a geniusly clever addition. What is this? Is Tempest explaining her backstory or merely thinking about it? How is Twilight understanding the backstory? If Tempest is explaining all this in a non-diegetic manner, why would she be sharing her feelings at a time like this at all? This three second shot is the most we see of Ponyville. You see that blurry, smoldering ruin? That's where the heart of the show you know and love is. This is not how shadows work unless the light source is a few inches behind Capper. Speaking of which, where did Capper come from? When we last saw him, the pirates and he had their ship destroyed, miles away. Did they just happen to decide on a vacation to the southern seaside? Trifecta of incredibly convenient timing allows Skystar to join the forming ragtag team of heroes sequence of the movie. That's it, right? We didn't make friends with any pony else? Even Spike is aware of how contrived this scene is. Let's get this storm started! Ooh, hey, that's good. I should trademark that. Storm King confirmed literally Hasbro. Also, trademark law confirmed most powerful entity. The Storm King may be an idiot, but he also just freed Princess Twilight because it's convenient for the plot. This simulated passage of time is a great metaphor for how long it should have taken the gang to arrive in Canterlot. Remember, Ponyville to Canterlot is an overnight trip by train. Here's the trip they took seemingly in a matter of minutes and likely on hoof. 
Skystar bowls some goons over. Murdoch contains one with a life preserver. But this one just stabs him in the butt. It doesn't aid the fight a whole lot. They just enjoy inflicting pain. Fluttershy is the one who inflicts real pain, though, in the form of overpriced therapy bills. You know it's been a while since the horrors of trench warfare when My Little Pony has to tiptoe around physical violence, but burning fur-covered enemies alive is a-okay. What? How? How, indeed. Capper isn't even holding Spike anymore. What? Tempest's backstory is all about how she realized trusting anyone was a bad idea and going at it alone is best. The Storm King's betrayal confirms that anti-moral for her. Deus Ex Pinkia. Pinkie Pie, you know only bulls can use that word. Together. Yes, together. Even though it'd be so much easier and safer for Rarity to levitate the staff down, Twilight lost her magic, but what's Fashion Horse's excuse? If the magic smoke spread far enough to reach the Storm King, why didn't it affect the main six? They're a lot closer to where the orb activated. Princess saves the princesses in the princesses' castle. Derpy literally saves the day. Had she not taken a bullet for Twilight, the Storm King would have won unopposed. Subtract one sin for best pony. Remember how all of Canterlot was practically destroyed? Not to worry. Everything's all better now because literally magic happened. In My Little Pony, stakes are about as common as stakes. This animation glitch. That we're all still here in one piece. Well, most of us are still in one piece. You are so grounded. <laughs> That's a strangely cheerful tone, considering she had not witnessed anything they just did. Does she even know the Storm King is defeated? Holding this indoor voice level conversation across an active concert. Ooh, what is it? It's never ending ammo for you two poops. Michelle Krieber's name is spelled wrong. The studio which created the closing credits released this image of their work. What's interesting is that the Storm King's eyes are different in the final product, suggesting a later revision to imply he's still alive. Thanks, Hasbro! Today, we celebrate our Independence Day! Perfect for children with no necks. Ah, uh, you're okay.